something dark and scary. A man was involved in a car accident. A drunk driver struck his truck, placing him in a hospital for days. After being released, he stayed home for full recovery. His wife was unable to take care of him since she worked many hours. He walked with crutches and still had a hard time making a fist with his left hand. His knee bothered him more than anything. He didn't go outside his apartment much. He couldn't stand the pain. He couldn't stand walking with crutches. He spent most of the days inside playing video games, binge watching TV shows, staring out the window of own goings of strangers, building a model airplane, exercising and stretching, taking long hot bubble baths. He was done with his crutches after the next week and walked with a limp. The stretching and exercises his physical therapist gave him helped. He did the same old routine every day. One day he sat in the living room watching TV. All of a sudden, he hears footsteps and children's voices coming from the apartment above. He wondered why the children were home, because the schools were not on holidays. It is the middle of the week, and around this time the kids should be at school. The next day, he heard the same footsteps and children's voices. It sounded like there were two children playing. The next day, the man lay on the couch flicking through the channels trying to find something that caught his interest. He then felt hungry. He didn't feel like cooking anything. He didn't feel like eating the leftovers from the other day his wife made. He decided to order a pizza. He smiled, thinking, wow, haven't had a pizza in a long while. After he paid and ate, he was full and knew he couldn't open the other box. He remembered the children in the apartment above him. He thought it would be good to give them a free pizza. He put on his shoes and picked up the box and made his way over to the elevator. It felt good to do something good out of the ordinary, he thought to himself. He still limped. He could barely feel the pain. The man had never met the family who lived in the apartment upstairs. Once the elevator reached the floor, the man walks over to the door, then knocks. There was no answer. He can hear someone moving around inside. The man knocks on the door once more. He balances the box of pizza with his right hand, feeling his arm trembling a bit. He forgot his body is still healing, and his right arm hasn't felt the same since the accident. It didn't hurt, but he could tell it wasn't the same. The man told himself that he would knock one last time, and if he didn't get an answer, he would just return back to his apartment. He knocked one last time, then he noticed someone was peering at him through the peak call. Who is it? Called a faint woman's voice from behind the door. The man explained that he lives in the apartment below, and that he had an extra pizza he was willing to give to them if they wanted it. The door opened slightly and the man could see part of a woman's face in the crack. He noticed that it looked very dark in the apartment, and it seemed odd. The woman's face is pale, and her eyes have dark circles. She looked cold and sick. Do you want the pizza? The man says, moving the box over to the crack of the door. Thanks but we don't want any," replied the woman in a whispery, cold voice. Maybe your children would like it, replied the man with a smirk. 
As soon as he said this, two small faces lined up below the mother's face. It was the children. They all looked horrible, nearly like their mother. Their eyes stared up at the man as their mouths barely hung open. The door was still just a crack as the man looked down at the faces staring up at him. The three faces were forming a line. Okay, give it to me, Van, said the mother. A hand reached out through the gap of the door and snatched the pizza box away from the man. The man just stood there in awkward silence. The three faces were still staring at him. Then the door slammed shut. The man turned away not sure of what he just witnessed. He then headed back to his apartment. Something bothered him as he walked. He felt a chill run up his spine. The image of three faces was burned into his mind. He walked faster, becoming more terrified. He reached the elevator. The faces were forming a line, he thought to himself. He pressed the button and waited for the elevator to arrive. Forming a line, vertically, one on top of the other. He pressed the button again, but the lift still did not come. Something was seriously wrong. The faces. He then went to the stairs and hurried down them. Faces lined up on top of each other. That's impossible. He frantically ran down the stairs. No bodies, he shouted. Finally, he reached his apartment. Just floating severed heads. Safely inside his apartment, the man hurried over to his phone and called the police. When the police arrived, the man explained what he seen. When the police searched the apartment upstairs, they found three bodies in a tub of a mother with her children. The bodies were missing their heads. They had been decapitated with a saw. According to the autopsy, they had been dead for three days. The police found the murderer hiding in a closet in the master bedroom. He was the woman's husband. His hands were covered in blood and he had gone completely insane. He kept trying to convince the police officers that his wife and kids were still alive. 